Charity is not a solution to poverty. It is an aggravation of the difficulty. The proper aim is to try and reconstruct society on such a basis that poverty will be impossible. Oscar Wilde. The word philanthropy is ancient Greek for love of humanity. In the second century CE, Plutarch used the concept to describe superior human beings. Some contemporary superior human beings, the almighty 1%, are eager to tell how much money they spend on charity, or better, on the love of humanity. It probably would be naive to ask about the genuine intentions of their aides, but who cares? Whether they do it from the bottom of their hearts or for the sake of PR and accruing tax benefits, at the end of the day their money helps people, right? Unfortunately, the answer is not so simple. Philanthropy by the uber-rich can be damaging. Let's overthink the dark side of modern charity. The statistical numbers are shocking, but logical. The role of private philanthropy in the world has increased dramatically in the past two decades, but so did the inequality. Nearly 75% of the world's 260,000 philanthropy foundations have been established in that time, controlling more than $1.5 trillion. There are more philanthropists than ever before. It's a fact. But the assumption that philanthropy automatically results in a redistribution of money is wrong. The world's wealthiest 1% of people own nearly half of all global financial assets, according to an Oxfam. Since 2020, the inequality is on the rise. The richest five men in the world have doubled their fortunes, while almost 5 billion people globally have become poorer. As much as 10% of the world's population go to bed hungry each night. At current rates, it will take 230 years to end poverty. But we could have our first trillionaire much sooner, in just a decade. According to Forbes, in 2023, the richest 400 people have collectively given more than $250 billion to charity. That's a lot of money. The amount needed to wipe out extreme poverty for a year is around $258 billion. So they do donate enough to eradicate inequality. The problem is, they don't always target inequality. A lot of elite philanthropy is about elite causes. Rather than making the world a better place, it largely reinforces the world as it is. The top charitable cause for ultra-wealthy donors in 2022 was education, arts and culture, healthcare and medical research, social services, and the environment causes. That's what we know of. Philanthrocapitalism, or philanthropic capitalism, is a way of doing philanthropy, which mirrors the way that business is done in the for-profit world. The decision on how philanthropic money is spent is made on the whims and personal interests of the wealthy rather than what is best. Those choosing where the money goes are often highly unrepresentative of the broader population, and thus more likely to be out of touch with their needs. Donor-advised funds, intermediaries between donors and actual charity organizations, serve as tools to anonymous donations. Among the ultra-wealthy, they are the most popular. Allowing donors to give vast sums to potentially unsavory organizations, including nonprofits that advocate for specific political causes or organizations classified as hate groups. And the fact that billionaires opt out of paying taxes and get to play God about where the money goes? That's private power, unaccountable private power. Chuck Collins, director of the program on inequality at IPS, told Fortune. Seem to really like philanthropy, but they don't like paying taxes. They are creative to find the means to legally avoid tax with the help of offshore financial centers and other tax havens. It's estimated that cash stashed in tax havens is worth at least 10% of the world's economy. Elon Musk, for example, paid a true tax rate of just over 3% from 2014 to 2018. Philanthropy also helps a lot with tax. As much as 74 cents of every dollar given to charity comes back to the donor in the form of tax breaks, with the highest earning donors getting the biggest benefits. No wonder they are generous with philanthropy. But proper taxation could actually help the poor. Just an annual wealth tax of up to 5% on the world's multimillionaires and billionaires could raise 1.7 trillion a year. 1.7 trillion is enough to lift 2 billion people out of poverty, deliver a 10-year plan to end hunger, and deliver universal health care and social protection for everyone living in low and lower middle-income countries. No need to wait for 230 years, I guess. 
Money raised by taxation is spent by democratically accountable governments that are not perfect either. But at least they have to justify their priorities to win the election, which are far more likely to relate to social needs. We should be thankful they do philanthropy work at all, some may say. It's none of our business how they distribute their own money. First of all, the ultra-rich are the biggest individual contributors to the climate crisis. The richest billionaires, through their polluting investments, are emitting a million times more carbon than the average person, as a matter of fact. The wealthiest 1% of humanity are responsible for twice as many emissions as the poorest 50%. As a result, the people in low-income countries who produce the least climate pollution suffer the greatest consequences. Corporations use their influence to oppose labor laws and policies that benefit workers, for example by fighting minimum wage increases, while pushing for political restrictions on unionization and supporting rollbacks to child labor laws. While corporate profits are soaring, the wages of nearly 800 million workers around the world have failed to keep up with inflation resulting in a loss of $1.5 trillion for those workers over the last two years only. The numbers are more surreal in the longer term. The compensation of CEOs has grown by 940% since 1978, while compensation for workers has only increased by 12%. Their greed doesn't only make them inadequately rich, but directly worsen the lives of the working class. In other words, communal harm must be done so that one can build the level of wealth needed to engage in philanthropy. The question is, would anyone need their philanthropy at all if corporations paid ethical wages? A small number of corporations exert extraordinary influence over economies and politics. These monopolies have a huge role in shaping the lives of ordinary people around the world, from influencing how much we are paid, to the foods we eat and can afford, and the medicines we can access. The Giving Pledge, a philanthropy campaign initiated by Warren Buffett and Bill Gates in 2010, is encouraging uber-rich to give away the majority of their wealth. There is nothing in the pledge that specifies what exactly the donations will be used for, or even whether they are to be made now or willed after death. It is just a general commitment to using private wealth for public good. It is not legally binding either, but a moral commitment. Essentially, what we are witnessing is the transfer of responsibility for public goods and services from democratic institutions to the wealthy. The exercise of social responsibilities is about how philanthropy can be used to reinforce a politico-economic system that enables such a small number of people to accumulate obscene amounts of wealth. More broadly, philanthropy serves to legitimize capitalism as well as to extend it further and further into all domains of social, cultural, and political activity. As we saw, corporate social responsibility is not making any real difference. The 2017 report by Oxfam states, when corporations increasingly work for the rich, the benefits of economic growth are denied to those who need them most. In pursuit of delivering high returns to those at the top, corporations are driven to squeeze their workers and producers ever harder, and to avoid paying taxes, which would benefit everyone and the poorest people in particular. Wealth redistribution is placed in the hands of the wealthy, and social responsibility in the hands of those who have exploited society for personal gain. In the end, while the Giving Pledge's website may feature more and more smiling faces of CEOs, the real story is of a world characterized by inequality that is only getting worse year by year.